Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Medical and Dental Expenses Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 LACERT Tax Software You don't need access to tax software to follow along but you might want the Form 1040 which you can find at the IRS website at irs.gov irs.gov The starting point Single filer Adam Smith living in Beverly Hills 90210 100,000W to income 12,550 the standard deduction getting us to the 87,450 taxable income mirroring that over here in our formula format 100,000 12,550 standard deduction 87,450 relying on the tax software to calculate the tax on page two which is the 1515 and that's going to be here at the 1515 that's our starting point. Let's go back up to page one. We're focused on line number 12, the standard or itemized deduction, currently taking the itemized deduction. The the I'm sorry, we're currently taking the standard deduction. The itemized deductions are on Schedule A, not currently highlighted in our LACERT tax software because we're not using this worksheet because we're taking the standard itemized deductions up top. We're focused in on the medical and dental. Now remember, when you're thinking about the itemized deductions, they have to be over the standard. The medical and dental are usually not the things that are gonna push people over the standard deduction uh, for multiple reasons. The things that will push people over are typically the interest, mortgage interest on the home, and then property taxes on the home in com combination with the state taxes are things that often push people over. So if they do not own a home, then it's less likely that the medical and dental are going to be able to do it alone to push people over due to one, the standard deduction, and two, we've got this floor taking place of the 7.5% of uh, the AGI that's going to be in place. So that's the first thing we want to keep in mind. If they have the home and they're already itemizing, much more likely they'll be able to take other itemized deductions such as the medical and dental. However, this one's also a little bit funny in that sense in that you have this floor so usually people itemize when they're more well off, they have more income because then they have more deductions. But as their income goes up, this floor also actually lowers the medical and dental. Now note that said, it's possible that someone has a severe medical and dental situation, possibly one time in their life or has some kind of condition where the medical and dental themselves could be significant enough to kind of push people over. So let's just get it. Let's just get a feel for how this looks. So first, let's go back on over and let's say, let's add some medical and dental. I'm not going to get into too much detail on the different categories. You could, you could get into the kind of the weeds on what qualifies as a medical and dental and so on. Usually it's fairly straightforward, but sometimes it could be confusing with regards to whether you, you deducted insurance premium somewhere else or something like that. But for now, I'm just going to put it into the prescription drugs here. And we're going to say, let's say 10,000, 10,000 and just total medical and dental. Pulling that over, that puts the medical and dental line one uh, here on uh, the medical and dental of the 10,000. Notice it now populated the 100,000 here. That comes from the form 1040 line 11, which if I go to the 1040 and look at line 11, is the adjusted gross income. So note when we look at the phase outs or anything like that, a floor in this case, it's not calculated on the total income, but typically the adjusted gross income. And so if we go back on over, Multiplying that times 7.5% gives us the 7,500. So of the 10,000, we only got then 2,500 if we were able to itemize. And obviously that 2,500 is not going to be sufficient to push us over the threshold. If we Even if we add state taxes, it comes up to 3,379. Comparing that to the form 1040 shows that we're not over the threshold. So we're still taking the 12,550, which is the standard deduction. So, so even if I increased it up above that number, like the 12,550, if I go back on over and say, what if it was 15,000? 15,000, is that gonna kick me over? Well, you still got that AGI threshold and this income for this individual is fairly high. So it's, it just, so it's not gonna kick it over still. We're still at, at the 12,550. If I go to schedule A and check this out, now we're at the 15,000 minus the 7,005. We're getting 7,005 of it. And that, if I add the state taxes, is up to the uh, 8,379. 8,379. 
So, so note that, so if I go back to the 1040, I'm still not taking it because, because of that floor, the 7.5 floor. Now this income is fairly high. So you could say, well, what if I wasn't making 100,000 of income? If I bring this back down and go to my wages and say this was 50,000, and then we come back on over and say, what would, what would happen here? Let's, let's bring it on down a little bit. Let's bring it to like 30,000 and then bring it back on over. So now we're taking the the itemized deductions because because we don't have that, se that 7.5. So now you can see the schedule A is highlighted over here. So now we have the same deductions of the 15,000, but the, the floor is lower because we only have the 30,000 and 7.5% and of it is 2,000 to, uh, 2,250. So 15 minus the 2,250 is 12,750 plus the state taxes that then pushes us over. So you can see this kind of interplay here between the fact that usually when people itemize, they have more income because that's when people have the homes and the bigger mortgages and the large home and then the property taxes are higher and state taxes are likely to be higher. Those are the things that push people over and those are the things that make it more likely to be able to itemize. However, if the income is too high, if they make a lot of income, then that medical and dental is a funny area because it actually then has that floor too that, that you gotta consider to take into consideration. So it's a little bit of a strange area. Now, if we were to go, if we were to go back on over and say, well, what, what if they were, what if they were married here? So if I have the same condition here and say they're married and I'm going to go back on over and say client is now going to married, Adam and Eve are married back to the forms. So now we got married filing jointly. And so now we've, I'm keeping the income the same. And now, of course, they're not taking the itemized deductions because the standard deduction is significantly higher now at the 25,100. So if I go to the Schedule A, you can see the same ca calculation here because I didn't change the, the income line item even though married at this point in time. And so we still have the total down here of the 13,353, which would be higher than the standard deduction if single but they're not single at this point. They are married at that point, and therefore it's not the thing that's gonna push push them over. Now, normally, let's bring this back to, let's bring this back to 100,000. If I bring this up to 100,000, and I pull that back up, so now we got married filing joint, 100,000, so I could go back on up here and say, there we have it, so we're not taking the deduction, but let's say they own a home. So if they own a home, going back on over and I'm going to say now they're probably going to have a significant amount of mortgage interest. This is the thing that usually pushes people over. Let's say 7,000 on the mortgage interest and let's say that they got property taxes, property taxes of let's say 6,000. And now if I go back on over uh, there's still that's still oh because they're married. Let's bring it up a little bit. Let's bring it up a little bit more. Let's say the interest is, let's say, uh, let's say the interest is 12,000 and the property taxes are 7,500 and then pull it on over. So now we're at the itemized deductions at the 27,996. So if I go back on over, the point I'm trying to make here is that the home is usually the thing that's pushing people over and the mortgage interest on it and then the property taxes and then the state taxes are things that can push people over. And once you've been pushed over, now that 7,500 on the medical expenses is more likely to be something that's gonna that's going to contribute to the itemized deductions. So now that those medical expenses are gonna kick in because they're over and above the the other deductions, the big ones. And so now that's gonna, that's how that combinations adds up to the 27,996, which pulls over to the first page of the 1040. So where we have right here. So now if I was to mirror this on my formula over here, we could say, well, how can I mirror that over here? Let's say that we had, the married couple, we'll try to say this 25, uh, nine, and then the itemized deductions. So the itemized deductions, if I go on over, we've got the medical and dental. Now there's a bit of a subcalculation 
for the medical and dental. So let's see if we can kind of replicate the sub calculation. We're gonna say that we have medical and dent dental expenses. Let's say dental, dental expenses. And you could kind of list them out underneath there, but I'm just gonna uh, put them in one line item for now. And so you could like have multiple line items that sub categorize out. But let's say we put them in here. We said they were 15,000. And let's try to move this out a bit. I'm actually gonna move this whole column over, this column right here. I'm gonna grab that and move it over here. So I have a little bit more space to do my to do my sub calculation. So let's say we, we took 7.5% uh, of AGI. So I'm gonna say 7.5. Uh, well, let's take the, the AGI first. AGI is coming from the first page here, there's the adjusted gross income, 100,000. And now I'm gonna take 7.5% uh, of AGI, 7.5% of AGI, or let's just say 7.5%. Let's say, let's just do it this way. We'll just say 0.075, make that a percent. And then I'm gonna add some decimals and then put an underline Maybe I just need one decimal. And then that's gonna give me the the floor, the floor. And so that's gonna be this, this times this. So there we have that. And so now we've got the medical and expenses. So deductible medical and dental is gonna be equal to the 15 minus the seven five and that's going to be the the seven five in this case did i do that right let's go back on over and say we went to the schedule a scrolling up yeah it's the seven five so that looks good so then i might pull that out into the outer column so let's pull this last calculation out here this is going to be the 15 minus the seven five into the outer column and maybe I shouldn't have pulled this stuff all over. I'll pull this back, put it back to where it was and let's sum it up again equals the sum of these items. So there we have it. So now the 75 is included. So I got the 15,000, the AGI and then multiplying that out. I, I And I probably could use another column but I'll keep it there. There's the floor. And then the deductible part is going to be that seven, uh, the seven thousand five hundred, the seven thousand five hundred. Now this gets a little bit tricky because you might say, well, what if this was, what if this was uh, uh, zero at this point in time? It's going to give me a negative seven thousand five hundred. So if I want to have this calculated automatically, I only want it to show a number if it's positive. So we can use a conditional formatting on this. I could say this is going to be equals if and then i'm going to say the if then formula if this uh if this number let's do it this way let's do it this way we're going to say this is going to be this minus this and then i'll pull it into the outer column here and say equals if brackets if this number is greater than zero then comma there's the condition then I want you to use this number. If it's not, which is a comma, what do you do if it's not? Then I want you to put a zero there. And so then we can do that. And so now if this was 15, so there's the zero if it was 15, that would take us to the 7,005. So that can make it a little bit more automated for our worksheet. So there's the 75. And then we also said that the mortgage interest we put in mortgage interest of over here. What did we put on the mortgage interest? 12,000, 12,000. And then we said the property taxes were like 7,005, I think. 7,5 on the property taxes, right? And then the state taxes are being calculated at the 996, which we'll talk about later. So 996. Often we're dependent on the software to kind of help us out with that, depending on the state tax calculation. That's the 27,996 totaled up now. So if I sum this up, 
We're at the 27,996. That pulls over to page one of the 1040. So there's the 100,000. Now we're taking the itemized because they're larger. There's our conditional formatting than the standard. And that brings us to the taxable income of the 72,004. So back to page one. There's the 72,004. Page two calculating the tax at the 8245, uh, at the 8245. So if I go back on over the tax calculated at the 8245. So that's just an idea or a thought process on how you can do, how you can enter this information into the system and possibly put some automation so you get a double check on some of that calculation and see how it's working with regards to the medical uh, expenses. Now, if I go back to schedule A here, uh, just note some of the other categories that we have with, with the medical. Let's go back onto the data input and go to the medical. We have the prescription drugs, right? So it's pretty, it's gonna give you some idea. Most data input software will have that. That'll give you some idea what the deductible portions will be. Some software will, will, will give you like an interview process to help you. Doctors, uh, hospital and nurses. And then we got the insurance premiums not entered elsewhere. So in other words, if you entered the insurance premium in some other place, uh, possibly, for example, if, if you had self-employed health insurance or something like that, we talked about how you possibly then could deduct it then on schedule one, line number two, in some uh, schedule one page number two, right here, self-employed health insurance deduction. So you can't take a schedule A deduction and another deduction for the same same thing. So those are the things you gotta, gotta be aware of. The long-term care items here and the lodging and transportation, uh, which, which could have some other complications, including possibly like a mileage method calculation, for example, uh, if uh, that was a factor that would be involved as well. So obviously some of those medical kind of things is our areas where you can get, you can get those gray areas, but the general rule is is that um is that you know obviously these items that are listed out here are are going to be generally uh, more of a straightforward item and of course if you got reimbursed for uh the expenses in some way then generally you would think that would not be a deduction at that point and of course you can't double dip on the deductions you can't take the the deduction of something like premiums in two places getting two deductions for the same thing